Welcome back to the Daniel Scott Design video series and today I'm going to be going over a topic that's very close to my waistline, food photography. All right, we're uh, going into Hobby Lobby to find a little platform to kind of put the food on. This is the first time I've been out in public vlogging, so I'm trying to break out of my comfort zone a little bit. So I found this. This is called a wall decor board. It looks really nice until you see the price. $80. Okay, so here we have a bunch of paper rolls here with different colors. You can use a green screen, blue screen. Then you also have different textures for like wood grain. But for what we're going for, we're looking for more of a, a lighted texture that can't be duplicated with paper. But this is a lot of different options you can use, especially for backdrops. So $10 a roll, it's a pretty good deal. Okay, so I found these. These are weathered wall boards that slot into each other. And so if we cut these down, we can easily store them and then put them on the table and arrange the pieces however we would like. I think I'm going to get this piece here. It's just $10 for a slat and we'll chop it up to about four or five pieces. Eric's going to help us out here, cut this piece of wood here into two feet each. So we're just going to lay these out right on top of each other and just put the food right on top just like that and then we'll have an instant table. Let me just take it apart and store it. How's that sound? Sounds good, man. Alright, so I found these gems. Those look to be uh, brass. Silver plated. Silver plated? Uh -huh. Okay. All right, well, thank you very much. All right, so I'm here at Bionic Burger. This is the home of the best Philly cheesesteak in Wichita. Megan here is going to uh, take my order. I'm gonna order a Philly cheesesteak sandwich with the fries and the, the drink. First, we adjust wood slats we bought from Home Depot. This is gonna make for an awesome wood table display. We're using one 600 watt strobe from a company called Godux. This is triggered wirelessly from the receiver that's mounted to the camera's hot shoe. Now don't laugh about my rig here. Sometimes we have to get a little creative with things we don't have on hand, uh, but I, I highly recommend picking up a heavy duty clamp with uh, an articulating arm. I'm using my cell phone's connected to my camera over Wi-Fi to trigger the shutter button. This makes it a lot easier to trigger the shutter when you have a camera hang hanging so close to the ceiling. Uh, check out my last video where I went into QDSLR dashboard app a little bit more in detail. I decided not to use the wax paper that came with the food, so I just decided to put the food directly onto the platters. Now the platters can be shined up using a chemical called Brasso, but I kind of dig the oxidization look. Then finally I arranged the food on the platter just ever so slightly. Okay, let's jump into Lightroom. The first thing we're going to do is to increase the exposure. Okay, we're going to warm this up just a little bit. Now, um, I like the color of the buns. I like the color of the fries and the table. But it looks like this cheese is kind of orange. This is mozzarella cheese. Mozzarella cheese does not look orange. We're going to turn it to white. So what we're going to do is um, go to the HSL color. HSL is uh, selected here. And then we're going to choose saturation and then drop down our yellow just a little bit. And if you look closely, our cheese now looks like mozzarella. One of the things I like to do is, especially with um, food for this top-down shot, is to sharpen it up. Now, one of the things you can do is increase the clarity, but then there's a much better way to do it. You're kind of limited on, on your options for this uh, clarity slider. So what we're going to do is um, move this down. We're going to just increase it just about 20. All right, now let's head over to our detail tab. And uh, let's go ahead and set our zoom to for a one-to-one -one ratio. This will show us the full resolution on our screen. 
And as you see, the, the fries look crisp, but I think that they could be crispier. You might know, when we turn the comparison on and off uh, for after, when and after we make these adjustments, you'll definitely see the apparent difference in detail. Okay, so, um, so the sharpening tool, or the detail tool, has three sharpening options. So amount, radius, detail, and masking. And while these first three are self-explanatory, the masking tool is what's super powerful. What this does is it allows us to apply detail um, in areas of high contrast, while um, areas that have low contrast, such as these shadows and highlights, it's not going to apply those because it, it thinks that these are areas that are smooth and we shouldn't have those, you know, it was a mosaic detail bumps. So let's go ahead and jump in. And so I'm going to apply the sharpening amount to about 100. So let's set it up at 95 there. Okay, and then the radius applies the radius around the detail. And if you hold Alt, you can kind of see how this is going to be applied to the high pass. And then so next we will go to our detail, bump this up a little bit. We don't want it too crunchy. And then the masking, this is the beautiful part. So as we slide this, let's say we'll keep it about 42. Um, the detail is not going to be applied to these areas of shadows or highlights. So I think it looks, I think it looks natural without being um, overly crunchy. So this is before and then after. Let's take a look at our Philly cheesesteak. It looks good. So this is a shot with just the strobe and without the bounce card. After we added the bounce card in, it allowed us to fill in some of the shadows from underneath. But you know what? Um, in the end, I actually prefer the shot without the bounce card because I like the kind of the mood that this kind of sets with the shadows in here. And we are done here. Yeah.